Ingenuity has already gone above and beyond every one of its operational goals and pushed the design envelope even further. Now it's flown nearly five times higher than originally planned. But should it keep pushing? On this episode of Mars Guy, proving that a helicopter can fly in the extremely thin atmosphere of Mars was done years before Ingenuity even got there thanks to a giant vacuum chamber at the Jet Propulsion Lab. But it still had to show that it could work on Mars with no humans at the controls. Ingenuity made it look easy, so after five initial test flights, it was time to push the envelope to probe the limits of this new mode of Mars exploration. A year after its first flight that went nowhere, Ingenuity flew an astounding 700 meters across terrain too dicey for Perseverance to traverse, which it had to go around. Still flying after another year, it celebrated with a flight reaching an altitude of 18 meters, six times higher than its first flight. Five months after that, Ingenuity flew straight up to 20 meters, a so-called pop-up flight, which was caught on video as I showed in episode 130. Apparently it works so well that just 240 meters away, it did another one. And like the previous pop-up flight, it stopped and hovered at five different altitudes, maybe as a way to document winds aloft. So the movement you can see during these hovers probably represents buffeting by wind and Ingenuity's autonomous response to it, trying to maintain its position relative to features on the ground. The fifth hover topped out at 24 meters, four meters above the previous record and eight times higher than its first flight. This time, the return to Mars didn't repeat the hovers except for a stop at the second hover position, probably just to make sure everything looked good for the final descent. The color camera shot images at each of the hover positions. Here's Mars sky for scale viewed from about five meters up. Each subsequent level is about another 5 meters higher. The view from the top provides a nice comparison to the orbital view from the high-rise camera, which can resolve features down to about a half a meter. A subsequent flight by Ingenuity really showed off its eye-in-the-sky capability. Flight 64 brought it into view of a prominent ridge at the edge of Neretva Vallis, the river channel entering through the rim of Jezero Crater from the left. Just as it was turning the corner of its flight path, Ingenuity captured this stunning scene, which includes the main channel and little side channel of Neretva Vallis and the mountainous rim of Jezero Crater. The side channel is filled with large sand ripples, a good place to land for Ingenuity, but a keep-out zone for Perseverance. Ingenuity snapped this image as it was about to cross into the ripples, highlighting the hazardous boulders that it flew over to get to the benign terrain beyond. Its last color image, taken right as Ingenuity was hitting the brakes before landing, is quite remarkable. It shows the sand ripples below and the bouldery ridge essentially at the same elevation as Ingenuity. Looking across the ridge, the other one on the other side of Neretva Vallis is visible, looking very much like its geologic twin. And the boulders and outcrops show horizontal lineations that look like layers, but they may just be horizontal fractures. This same characteristic was observed in the boulders of the Sita formation on the crater floor explored early in the mission. Perseverance shot this mosaic with its MassCam Z camera. The rocks here have similar mineralogy as the ones observed by Ingenuity more than 7 kilometers away. And with their similar morphology, it's possible that they formed in a similar way. An important observation in understanding the geologic history of Jezero Crater. So as Ingenuity continues to demonstrate its utility for science, The question arises whether it should be put at risk pushing the limits of its flight envelope or whether it should be carefully preserved to continue its role as an explorer well into the future.